All right. So on behalf of Cal OES, our fantastic partners with the county and the community and at FEMA, welcome to the first ever whole community recovery workshop. We are delighted that you're joining us today. But before I get started, I want to go over a few logistics. ASL interpreting is being provided throughout the program to ensure that ASL interpreting is visible at all times. Please keep your cameras turned off. Uh, and also please remain on mute when I'm speaking. For those who would benefit from using captioning, please select the closed caption icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. From there, select the turn on captions feature. Captions being provided in English and Spanish. And stream text is also being provided. The link to access the stream text has been posted in the chat. Uh, para subtítulos en español, selecciona el icono de subtítulo en la parte inferior de la pantalla de Zoom y seleccione español. También utilizamos stream text al que se puede acceder mediante el enlace del chat. For those who would like to listen to the meeting in Spanish, please select the globe icon, then select the language of your choice. Para aquellos que desean escuchar la reunión en español, seleccione el icono de globo y seleccione el idioma de su preferencia. This workshop is being recorded and will, upon request, be made available. Uh, we can provide you with a recorded copy as well as uh, transcripts in English or Spanish. And you can request those by emailing oafn at caloes.ca.gov. And we'll post that email address in the chat. With that, let's get started. In recent years, California has experienced a high volume of natural disasters. With these events, we find everyone is affected, but they create unique challenges for individuals with disabilities and people with access or functional needs who, historically, have had a difficult time navigating the complex recovery process. This workshop is designed to empower the whole community to successfully navigate the recovery process. Today, we're going to hear from uh, the Office of Access and Functional Needs at Cal OES. That's me, Vance Taylor, Chief of the Office of Access and Functional Needs. We'll hear from the FEMA Office of Disability Integration and Coordination, the County of San Diego Office of Emergency Services, the FEMA individual assistance team, as well as Cal OES's team, the Small Business Administration, and FEMA and Cal OES's voluntary agency liaisons. You have an opportunity to ask questions throughout the workshop and to email subsequent questions following the webinar. While today's workshop will provide a good overview of the recovery process, for specific information, about individual cases or to register for FEMA services, please visit one of the two FEMA disaster recovery centers near you. Locations for each center will be posted in the chat throughout the meeting. With that, I'm delighted to welcome our first presenter, Mr. Arthur DeVore III, a Disability Integration Advisor with FEMA. Arthur. Good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Arthur DeVore, and I'm a Disability Integration Advisor within FEMA's Office of Disability Integration and Coordination. Welcome to this whole community recovery event. A lot of times people think, what is the importance of whole community inclusion? Well, whole community is a philosophical approach, I'm sorry. And, um, and how we conduct the business of emergency management. Benefits of this include 
shared understanding of the community's needs and their capabilities, greater empowerment and integration of resources across the community, stronger, stronger social infrastructure, and the establishment of relationships that facilitate more effective prevention, protection, mitigation, response, and recovery activities, and increased individual and collective preparedness. In accordance to the National Disaster Recovery Framework, FEMA's 2022 to 26 strategic plan and federal laws, regulations, and executive orders, it's my role to ensure that we support our local, state, and federal partners and help them understand the importance of accessibility and our obligation to equal access in all of our emergency programs, products, and services. Current trends that we've noticed um, that become barriers to emergency recovery are programmatic access, communication access, and physical access. Programmatic access means there are no barriers to access that's written into our policies and procedures. Communication access ensures that we're providing language translation, interpretation, and writing, and formats that the survivors and registrants can understand. And then physical access ensures that we are providing public spaces that people with mobility disabilities, vision disabilities, or hearing disabilities can navigate. All of our FEMA disaster recovery centers are barrier free. If you all come into contact with any of our FEMA staff or disaster survivor assistance teams in, in the field, they're able to communicate with you in a language that you're most comfortable with. And all of our policies and procedures ensure equal access for people with disabilities and others with access and functional needs. As you're out in the community and you need assistance with FEMA registrations, or you have a problem with or issue with any of these things, please feel free to contact me. My information will be dropped into the chat. I look forward to working with you. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you, Arthur. Much appreciated. All right. Next, we're going to hear from Cody Gallagher. Cody is a emergency services coordinator with the San Diego County Office of Emergency Services. Cody, thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thank you, Vance. Thank you for uh, extending the invitation to our office. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Cody Gallagher. I'm a emergency services coordinator with the San Diego County Office of Emergency Services. Uh, wanted to just provide a few updates to this group. Uh, our EOC does still remain activated uh, in response to the January 22nd storm. Uh, we continue to work with both our state representatives at Cal OES and the Federal Emergency Management Agency representatives here on the ground uh, to support the community during this time. Um, I see in the chat here we have uh, posted the two disaster recovery centers that the county is in uh, coordination with our state and federal partners to support uh, those individuals who arrive at that location. Uh, we've also uh, been coordinating with our FEMA disaster survivor assistance teams, which were mentioned, that are out in the field um, in the community helping people register for FEMA as well. And I that is uh, all the updates I have on my advance. All right. Thanks, Cody. Appreciate it. We know that the county has been leaning forward on this and appreciate that partnership. Also appreciate everything you're doing to make sure there are things like accessible transportation services available, as well as languages uh, that are available. So thank you for that. Uh, with that, we're going to switch over and we're going to hear from Valerie Brown. Valerie is the chair of San Diego's MOAD, which is a voluntary organizations mm -hmm. active in disasters. Valerie, thanks for joining us. Looking forward to hearing from you. All right, thank you for having me, Vance. Uh, so with San Diego County VOAD, we're that nonprofit and faith-based groups uh, collaborative that come together to help meet needs. And so at the DRCs, we are specifically there to help people sign up for either help with cleaning up your property, your home, um, or doing mold suppression, either of those things that need to happen. We have volunteer teams and materials able to do that work for you. If you're at the DRC, you'll be able to stop at our VOAD table and sign up for that. So that's one of the things we can help you with. The Another is resources 
to help you in the recovery process. While we will not be duplicating benefits with anything FEMA is doing, we can provide um, materials. So we've been working with the state to chase down um, medical equipment um, using our VOAD partners across the country to help with that. Um, and we're providing uh, resources such as um, uh, mattresses and things like that as people are able to return to their homes. Um, and then the last thing that we're working on rolling out is our disaster case management program. So it, it will be coming, it's a state and federal partnership and the VOAD will be the entity um, running that program for hopefully for San Diego County. So right now we're bringing on case managers to help. We will have an access and functional needs case management specialist to help. Um, and so we'll be able to help with uh, FEMA appeals, your recovery planning, all of those pieces. So again, those, uh, those resources are currently accessed at the disaster recovery centers in Spring Valley and at Mountain View in the city of San Diego. So if you're able to um, uh, reach there, please, um, please do so. If you need assistance, um, we will be able to work with the, uh, the county to be able to provide that assistance outside um, as soon as we hire those disaster case managers. And so that is all I have to report. Thank you, Vance. Valerie, we appreciate it. And I, I know, I happen to know that you're on travel today. And so yes. thank you for joining us from uh, afar. We absolutely appreciate it. Um, and there was a question about VOAD and what that stands for. So I'll just repeat it again. This is Voluntary Organizations Active in Disasters. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Valerie. Um, okay, so we're going to turn over uh, time to hear from FEMA's individual assistance team, uh, as well as our Calaris individual assistance uh, support. And that's going to be Pamela Brashreeder. She's the individual assistance branch director at FEMA, uh, followed by Nicole Benson, who is the deputy individual assistance branch director for this disaster. Pamela and Nicole. So good morning, and I am trying to get my video to start. So give me just a second, please. Not for sure what was going on. I tested this earlier. I can send a message as well. Let's see if this helps. I'm going to click the ask to start video. Start. So I can see that a box appeared, but we cannot see you. Well, and I have tried a couple of different ways. So for the sake of... We've got your voice, though. We hear you loud and clear. So. Yeah. For the, for the sake of going ahead and not delaying anything, if you can hear me, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because I do have a presentation to share with you today. <laughs> okay, and can somebody confirm that they can see the screen? I'm, I'm not seeing the presentation. Yeah. Now, you know what I can do though is, I believe I have a copy of those slides. You do? I can share it on my end. Um, just wanna make sure, give me one second. Let me open it up on my end. And then I'll be more than happy to play the Vanna White uh, role here and just help tap through this. One second. So while he's doing that, I will introduce myself a little bit. My name is Pamela Glashrader. I am with FEMA's um, Individual Assistance Program.
program. Um, I am an individual and households program um, called uh, SME, which is, um, I don't know what that stands for. They, they say that I know what I'm, I'm saying. So what I'm going to do today is just go over briefly a, a highlight of our programs. There you go. So um, if we can just go to the next page. Subject matter expert, that's what it stands for. Um, I have a little issue with FEMA's acronyms and remembering them and I've been around for over 30 years. So I'm gonna try not to use any of them today. So the first thing we're going to cover is how can you apply for assistance? How can you get help with questions you have or um, help understanding our appeals process? Now you can do that in multiple ways. You can do that at our 1-800 number, which is 1-800-621-3362, which spells out FEMA. You can do it in person at one of our disaster recovery centers. Those addresses were already placed in the chat. You can actually use the internet and go to disasterassistance.gov and not only register, but create an account so that you can see your information yourself. You can also use our mobile app, which is the FEMA, F-E-M-A, mobile app. To apply for assistance, you have until April 19th, 2024. To receive assistance, we may provide it for up to 18 months after the date of declaration or until August 19th, 2025. And as Aaron put in here is that if you call our 1-800 number and you need a relay service, please let them know and we'll be more than happy to communicate with you through the relay service. Next slide, please. So first I'm going to go through some general conditions of eligibility. So to receive FEMA assistance, the applicant must be a US citizen, non-citizen national, or qualified alien. It can also be a undocumented resident who is the parent or legal guardian of a minor child who is a US citizen, non-citizen national, or qualified alien, as long as the child and uh, lives in the same household. We must also verify your identity. So ID, identity verification. This is so that we can make sure that we are helping the right person and to cut down on fraud. So we may ask you if we cannot verify your identity at the very beginning of the registration process to send in documentation, such as your social security card and your state issued ID to, to just verify that you are who you are. We also need to verify occupancy and primary residence. This is just as simple as a copy of that state issue ID if it was issued prior to the disaster. And it has the address where you're living at, which is the address that you registered at. The disaster that we have here in San Diego County is for severe storms, such as the wind and the rain from the storms damage to your roof and from the flooding. Um, it is for a period of time between for damages between January 21st 
and January 23rd of 2024. Now, even if you have insurance, you are encouraged to apply. FEMA can help with underinsured or uninsured disaster caused expenses and serious needs. Insured applicants still need to apply before the 19th of April. So even if you have insurance, we go ahead and encourage you to apply now. Next slide. So I'm going to review FEMA's main individual and households program um, assistance that we can provide. These are divided into two different categories, housing assistance and other needs assistance. Under housing assistance, we can provide rental assistance. This is assistance to live somewhere else while you are um, unable to live in your home, while you're making repairs to your home, while the landlord repairs your home, or until you find another permanent place to stay. We can provide temporary lodging assistance. Temporary lodging assistance is assistance for that hotel and motel that you may have had to pay out of pocket for prior to getting your rental assistance. So I know that this event happened back in January. So if you've been paying for a hope to stay in a hotel yourself, then FEMA may be able to help you with the reimbursement of some of those hotel fee, uh, fees. We have a repair assistance program. This is for owners whose owner-occupied home has been damaged as a result of the disaster. And you can receive up to 42,500 to repair your home. Replacement housing assistance is for those who have lost their home completely as a result of this event. And again, they can receive up to 42,000 500, which is the maximum that you can receive for repair or replacement. Rental assistance, temporary lodging assistance, and some assistance for ADA items such as grab bars, a ramp, a ADA bed, and other items do not count towards this 42,500 maximum. Now let's move over to other needs assistance. Other needs assistance is assistance to help with serious needs and necessary expenses. Not everyone is referred to other needs assistance right away. You may be asked to go through a program through the SBA, the Small Business Administration or you may be referred to other needs assistance directly from registration. And that is based on the information that you provide at the time of registration. I'm going to cover the items that we can pay directly first. These are items that we do not make you go to the SBA or do not ask for you to go to the SBA before we can assist. These items, are funeral assistance. If you've lost a, someone as a result of the disaster and you are the person financially responsible. Medical and dental assistance. This can be both as a result of an injury from the disaster or if you've lost your medication, your eyeglasses, your wheelchair as a result of the disaster, they may be under medical and dental. Child care. So the best example I have of child care assistance is you have a child and the facility that your child went to for um, daycare has been affected by the disaster and has to, to do repairs and shut their doors. So you've moved your child to another facility 
and you have an added expense because of that. And then we have what we call our miscellaneous disaster specific items. These are items like if you needed to purchase a generator while the power was out in order to run medical equipment. So these items, FEMA will refer you directly if you've listed one of these items and we will start working with you by requesting additional information on these items. The two categories that do need to possibly go to the SBA, the Small Business Administration first, um, not always, but sometimes, um, our personal property. Now, this is essential personal property, like your clothing, um, furniture, appliances, and assistance for your transportation. I do know that in this disaster, there were a lot of automobiles that were flooded. So if you've lost your transportation as a result of the disaster, this is something that we can also help you with under our other needs assistance program. Like our housing assistance program, our other needs assistance program has a separate maximum of 42,500. So just to clarify that, an applicant who is eligible may receive up to 42,500 from housing assistance and another 42,500 from other needs assistance. So next slide, please. I wanna go ahead and cover our, our appeals process. Now, if an applicant disagrees with the determination or decision about money assistance, they may appeal that determination. Appeal letters do need to be dated 60 days from the date on the letter that you've received. This is on that determination letter, the one that tells you how much you're going to get or if you've been denied, the reason why you've been denied. It is required to be signed and you do need to include written documentation that substantiates the reason why you're appealing. One of the um, most prevalent reasons why we receive an appeal is because somebody has insurance to cover their losses. So they send in their insurance settlement, denial, or even their, um, or even a copy of their policy showing that they actually do not have coverage for flooding along with that appeal letter. If you are appealing for home repairs or for additional assistance for your personal property or your transportation, you need to make sure you include those contractor estimates. Now to help FEMA marry up your appeal with your file, we do ask that you include your FEMA registration ID number and our disaster response number, which is DR4758. So um, you can upload these documents to your online FEMA account at disasterassistance.gov. You can take the documents to a DRC, a disaster recovery center, or you can mail them or fax them in to us and your letters will have the mailing address and the fax number included in them. Next slide. So I want to just um, briefly go over our crisis counseling, um, disaster legal services, disaster case management, and disaster unemployment programs. Now, these programs are programs that FEMA helps with, but does not necessarily um, administer. So first of all, there is our crisis counseling program. And this program assists disaster impacted individuals and communities in recovering from major disasters through the provision of community-based outreach and services. The goal is to aid survivors in recovering from the adverse reactions to disasters 
and to begin to rebuild. The second item on the list is disaster legal services, which provides legal uh, assistance to lower income survivors affected in a presidentially declared nature disaster. Disaster case management, we have actually already um, heard the voluntary agency active in disasters representative um, speak a little bit about what disaster case management is, which is when approved, um, it is a process that promotes partnerships between case managers and the disaster survivors to assess and address the survivors verified disaster cause unmet need through a disaster recovery plan. And then finally, we do have um, disaster unemployment assistance available in our event. Um, the period of assistance for disaster unemployment is 26 weeks. And the filing deadline right now is April 2nd. And Next slide, which I think that should be all of them. And that's my presentation for today. Thanks very much. We, we appreciate it, Pam. Um, one of the things that we'd like to do is to have Nicole Benson join us. Oh, there she is. Hey, Nicole. Uh, Nicole's with Calorie S. She's amazing. She's going to talk this for a few minutes as well. Thank you, Vance. So, um, so I just want to reemphasize a few of the things that uh, Pamela was saying was saying earlier. Um, first of all, register, register. The, the upcoming deadline is April 19th. And so even if you have insurance and you're not sure if you would qualify, uh, if you're not sure if if you would if you would potentially need it it is better to register before the deadline just in case just in case you are you find out about uh about grants that you are eligible for later on and unless you figure out um unmet needs later on it's really very important to meet that registration deadline um and and as pamela was saying earlier you can go to the disaster recovery centers, you can call FEMA, um, but it's very important to be aware of that de deadline of April 19th. Another important deadline coming up is if you have any food related needs. For example, if your refrigerator still isn't, still isn't working, um, we have a county health and human services currently at the disaster recovery centers helping to receive applications and to process those uh, applications for disaster CalFresh to uh, issue assistance for anybody who would potentially qualify for that. Um, lastly, related to registering for FEMA, read your response letters. One of the common challenges that we, that we often hear is that if you receive a letter from FEMA saying that you are denied, uh, it often means that you just need to provide some additional documentation or some additional information to FEMA to be able to qualify. So if you receive those, those, those letters that say you are denied, please read the, read the entire letter so that you are, uh, so that you can understand what you would need to do to qualify. So I also want to get into some additional uh, programs that are provided from the state to assist uh, disaster survivors. So we do have the state supplemental grant program, which is administered by the California Department of Social Services. This is provided to individuals who receive the maximum amount from FEMA that $42,500, they are automatically referred over to CDSS if they reach that maximum grant amount. And the state can provide up to a, a additional $10,000 based on those 
unmet needs that FEMA has identified. So if you have had significant losses um, and the amount of funding provided by FEMA does not completely cover those, you can provide up to a additional $10,000. In addition, the governor's state of emergency has waived a number of fees to replace critical documents. For example, replacing driver's licenses, identity cards, vehicle registration, um, your vital records such as birth certificates, um, all of those fees are waived under the governor's state of state of emergency. Okay. Uh, some other state agency support that may be useful to disaster survivors um, is from the California Department of Insurance, uh, who can assist with any insurance issues um, related to, you know, receiving, um, just working through those, through those, through those issues. Uh, you can visit the California Department of Insurance website at insurance.ca.gov, or you can call them at 1-800-927-4357. The California Contractor State Licensing Board is also a very useful state, state agency partner. They can provide guidance on, on hiring a contractor, investigate complaints, verify licenses for those contractors. Uh, so if you are in a situation where you need to hire a contractor to make housing repairs, we do strongly recommend that you verify that they have a license. Um, and if you have any uh, questions on uh, working with a contractor, you should be contacting the California State Licensing Board. Uh, in addition, we know that it's tax season. Uh, so many people will have questions regarding how to understand and um, uh, report their disaster losses uh, within their within their tax filings and how that um, how that exactly works. So you can absolutely contact franchise franchise tax board at 1-800-852-5711. For those additional questions as well. Um, so those are the main things that I wanted to cover uh, today, um, but I will continue to be on the line uh, if there are any questions on anything that we have we have spoken about today. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Absolutely appreciate it. So I want to just pause for a second and see if there's any questions that any of the participants have? Then it looks like Elsie's got our hand up. So Elsie, I'm gonna go ahead and push the allow to talk button. So if you wanna come off mute and ask your question, we'll try and get your response. All right, Elsie, we've got you. Ready to talk? Or, or ask your question. All right. So, Elsie's having some technical issues there. So, what we'll do is we'll get that either in the chat or circle back afterwards. Then, again, if anybody has questions for uh, Pam or Nicole, uh, please feel free to send an email to OAFN at Cal OES. .ca.gov, and we'll get that answered. All right, thanks, Nicole. All right, so we've heard a few times uh, people reference the Small Business Administration, SBA. So what I want to do is bring on Corey Williams. He's a public information officer with the Small Business Administration. But, and he's going to spend a few minutes going to talk about who they are, what they do, and why we keep hearing their names. So, Corey, we'll turn it over to you. Good morning. My name is Corey Williams, and I'm a public information officer 
with the U.S. Small Business Administration's Office of Disaster Recovery and Resilience. One, one thing that always happens in times of disaster is to know what SBA's role is during any kind of disaster. Because, you know, the one question they ask is, well, does SBA only help out businesses? Well, in times of disaster, the U.S. Small Business Administration's Office of Disaster Recovery and Resilience not only helps out businesses of all sizes, but homeowners, renters, and nonprofits. So businesses can borrow up to $2 million to repair and replace disaster damaged real estate, machinery, inventory, and equipment. But the most important thing I emphasize for business owners is the need for working capital during this disaster to sustain the business. And that money can be used to pay ordinary expenses such as mortgage. It can be used to pay the fixed payroll expenses. It can be used to pay vendors um, because many times during a course of a disaster, there are so many things that end up happening, canceled contracts, um, postponed events, different things like that. So that can have an economic impact on the business. And that's the purpose of the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, to provide that working capital to the business owners to sustain themselves during this recovery period. Now, one question people always ask was, Corey, you know, I really could use some capital, but I don't want to pledge collateral. Well, with the SBA's program, you can borrow up to 25000 for your physical loss and up to 25000 for your economic injury, and that's an unsecured loan. Further, there's a one-year deferment on all payments and a 0% interest accrual. So for that business owner who may need some capital um, to be able to borrow up to 25,000 for the physical loss and up to 25,000 for economic injury and potentially being able to pay out the loan before the end of the year, then there is no loan. So there's so many benefits to the business loan and the interest rates are as low as 4%. Again, no closing cost, no cost, no cost to apply, no prepayment penalties, and again, 12-month deferment with no interest accrual. So that really is a game changer to help out our San Diego County business owners. And for our nonprofits, they are treated very similar to businesses in the fact that they can also borrow up to $2 billion to repair, replace, disaster damage real estate, machinery, inventory, and equipment. But nonprofits also suffer economic injury as well. So let me give you an example. So let's say we had um, a major event coming up in mid-March. And because of the flooding, um, they actually, they had a hundred tables that they were selling, but then because of the economic impact, now they only sold 50 tables. Well, for that nonprofit, they were anticipating revenue based on a hundred tables sold. So to have half their revenue reduced, that is economic impact. Or let's say we have a church. There is a festival coming on in April um, around Easter time. And they had, you know, a, they even anticipated a thousand people to the, attend the event. Now only four or 500 people attend the event. Well, again, that is economic injury because the revenues based are to allow them to be able to get that revenue based on a thousand people in attendance. So again, Economic injury is, you know, hard to identify, and that's why the deadlines are different because the we have an actual nine month deadline, so that's November the nineteenth, twenty twenty four. But the one thing I always say is, don't wait until month four, month five, month six 
to realize, oh, Corey, we've had a drop in sales for the last six months. Um, or Corey, um, we had to lay off one of our best employees because our books are tight. We don't want you to have that situation. So the one thing with economic injury that I encourage you to do is to be very proactive. As soon as you see the signs that there is some kind of drop in sales, laying off an employee, not being able to meet that monthly mortgage obligation, that is the time to apply. Don't exhaust your savings. Go ahead and get that, at that SBA loan as that safety net because again, you don't want to draw out your savings and potentially lower your credit because we do look at credit history and repayment ability. So don't do that. Don't, you know, draw out your personal savings. Take advantage of the loan. Again, keep in mind, 12 month deferment, 0% interest accrual for the entire first year. So many businesses can go ahead and get that unsecured loan and turn around and pay it before the interest accrues at the end of the year. So it's a great program. And then for our homeowners, homeowners can borrow up to $500,000 to repair, replace disaster damage real estate and up to $100,000 to repair, replace disaster damage personal property, which would include any automobiles loss. And, you know, my heart goes out to those in San Diego County that lost vehicles as well as their home and biz in business. So I understand the need for um, the programs that we have in place through SBA. Um, the home loan interest rates are as low as 2.688%. Again, no closing costs, no cost to apply, no prepayment penalties, 12-month deferment, and 0% interest accrual. Interest rates, I, I actually forgot for the nonprofits, is actually fixed at 3.25%. I wanted to go back and correct that error in not, not setting that um, interest rate. But renters can also borrow up to $100,000 to repair, replace disaster damage personal property, which would include any vehicles lost as well. And again, 12 month deferment, no interest accrual, no prepayment penalty, no cost to apply. So, one of the questions that people asked is well, Corey, how do I apply? Well, you can go to lending.sba. Dot gov. Again, that's lending.sba.gov. Now, the physical deadline is the same as FEMA's, so it's going to be April 19th, 2024. However, if you have economic injury only, that deadline is November the 19th, 2024. Again, the one thing I really want to emphasize, and I'm a small business owner myself, is when you see the signs as a business, as a nonprofit, that sales are not right, my employees are, I'm having to cut hours, or any sign of economic distress, please, 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 that is the time to apply for the SBA disaster assistance loan. And again, you know, with 0% interest accrual, 12 month deferment. If you choose to actually pay off the loan once, you know, for a homeowner, if you have insurance coming, you can go ahead and apply because once you get your insurance recovery, you can turn right around and pay off the SBA loan. So we are located in both disaster recovery centers. And again, you can apply online by going to lending.sba.gov, or you can call our customer service center number, which is 1-800-659-2955. Again, I'm going to repeat that, 1-800-659-2955. Two nine five five, and the if you want to apply online, go to lending.sba.gov. Thank you so much for allowing me to present today. This was great. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Uh, let's just pause for one quick second. See if there's any any questions. I'm not seeing any. Um, 
but we'll certainly follow back if anybody has something that they come up with either now but, or later on in the program. This was a question for Corey. Uh, is SBA loans only for San Diego or is it for everyone? Great question. So right now the primary county is San Diego County, but we also offer what we call our economic injury disaster loan program for any contiguous county. And that's going to be Imperial, Orange and Riverside counties. So those three counties are eligible for economic injury only. And let me just explain a little bit about how that economic injury can, you know, impact the contiguous counties. So let's say there's a vendor in San Diego County and they get most of their supplies from Orange County. But due to the business shutdown, now that Orange County business that they were ordering their supplies from, they they've reduced their shipment from 100, you know, 100 orders to 50 orders. Well, now, again, that's created economic injury to that Orange County business owner, because, again, they've been having a longstanding relationship with that business, 100 orders a month. Now, because that San Diego County business has been impacted, it also creates an adverse impact to that Orange County business. So that's why we have the um, Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program for the contiguous counties of Imperial, Orange, and Riverside counties. Excellent, thank you. Uh, there's also a question about applying online. And is that just- Yes, and that's gonna be at the lending.sba.gov. Again, that's lending.sba.gov. Previously, we've had disaster loan assistance at sba.gov, um, um, disaster loan assistance um, sba.gov. That site is no longer active. So again, due to the new portal being set up, it's lending.sba.gov. So we apologize if you visited pre previous sites that said disaster loan assistance.sba.gov. That site's no longer active. It's only the lending dot sba.gov so thank you for that question excellent then we got one more question it says does homeowners also include manufactured homes that do not own land it does so we can help out those manufactured homeowners um, and also if there's a need for relocation we do offer relocation if there's if it's uh, to get them outside of a flood zone and one of the things that I also wanted to touch on, I'm glad I get a, just a quick, quick chance to talk about too, is when we also rebuild, we want to rebuild stronger. So a part of the SBA disaster loan program for homeowners and business owners is our mitigation funds, where a business owner or homeowner can borrow up to 20% of their total loss for mitigative measures. So under the old program, it used to be the same peril. Now, the great thing about the new SBA programs is that this is for any peril. And we know that, you know, with Southern California, wildfires are around the corner. So to be able to protect not only from any kind of flooding, but also wildfires or any kind of strong wind storms. So shutters on the windows, stronger, stronger roof. Um, different, you know, fire resistant, um, you know, different equipment for the house. All those now can be approved for mitigative measures. So again, it's not the same peril anymore. It's for all perils. So again, I encourage you to also apply for the mitigation because that's 20% of the total loss for all perils. Fancy on mute. Wow, that makes sense then, doesn't it? Corey, thanks very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. If Thank you, Vince. We'll get that, get those over to you. Um, we're gonna switch over 
And we're going to hear from John Chavez. John is the voluntary agency liaison at FEMA. Then we'll hear from Valerie Mahanovic. She's the voluntary agency liaison at Cal OES. John? All right. Good morning, everyone, and happy Monday. I am the FEMA voluntary agency liaison for this disaster. My function is to assist in the building of the long term recovery group. I'm also a San Diego local and a member of the San Diego Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster, the BOAD. As we've heard, whole communities are means by which residents, emergency management, organizational and community leaders and government, government officials all work together. Together, we collectively understand and assess the needs of the community, determine the best ways to organize and strengthen their assets, capacities, and interests. Doing this, we make sure we are doing our best to be inclusive. In a sense, whole community is the best approach when building a long-term recovery group. Working the whole community approach allows us to engage the full capacity of the private and nonprofit sectors, including businesses, faith-based, disability organizations, and the general public. We also include local, tribal, state, territorial, and governmental partners. The benefits of whole community include a more informed, shared understanding of community risks, needs, and capabilities an increase in resources through the empowerment of our community members, and in the end, more resilient communities. We are very fortunate to have a strong BOAD in San Diego, and all of us working together are going to help San Diego recover. And that is my presentation for this morning. Thank all of you for what you do and have a great week. All right, thank you, John. We'll turn it over to Valerie now. Helps with the mic off or on. Good morning. This is I'm Valerie Mohanovich. I'm the Cal OES Voluntary Agency Liaison for the state. I am very similar to John. So when there's a disaster, FEMA and uh, Cal OES Voluntary Agency Liaisons, we pair together to kind of be that ears and eyes on the ground in the community to support our long-term recovery groups to help our committees form in the long-term recovery groups to help um, our VOED, Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster, and bring in um, groups that may or may not be in the community. Um, we identify those needs and then we look at uh, potentially bringing in the money, muscle, and materials um, into the community to help with that long-term recovery. And long-term recovery could be it is the word long term. They always say not to use that cliche. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And um, we really are there participating in long term recovery until every survivor achieves whatever that new normal is in their life. Um, so uh, truth be told, I was with voluntary agencies 20 years before I came to California Office of Emergency Services. And that's where my heart is. My heart is in the community. Uh, as a voluntary agency liaison, we advocate for the community. We advocate for our nonprofits that are doing the hard work, and we do our best to support all of you. And um, I think pretty much, John, thank you. He's, he's, uh, he's actually taught me a lot uh, when I came on to Cal OES, and he's pretty much said um, a lot about what a voluntary agency liaison does. I'll type my... Um, my contact information in the chat in case anyone needed to reach out to me um, with any questions. I'm helping to happy to connect people to resources. And, and that's my, I'm a little under weather, I'm sorry. Uh, and that's the end of my report. Hey, thanks, Valerie. Appreciate it. Thanks, especially uh, you being under the weather. Thanks for joining us. So, all right. So I know this is a lot of information that's been presented today. Um, Arthur, looks like you get your hand up. Yes, I, um, I just wanted to add, um, I know FEMA, the process for registering for FEMA can be very complex. I just wanted to um, also put on everyone's radar that unfortunately, during these times, um, people tend to try to take 
advantage of people. So please be aware of fraud. Um, ensure that you identify anyone who asks for your personal information that they are from either the county, FEMA, or the state. Um, also, as a part of the IA process, we do have housing inspectors that comes out to inspect your home. When these people come out to your home, they should have a FEMA badge. Most times they call you before they come to your house. Um, if you require accommodations for translation services or NSL interpreting, please inform the housing inspectors. They will be happy to set up that service for you so they could uh, mitigate any communication access needs. And also um, just keep in mind that if you know of any survivors who uh, wasn't able to participate in this presentation, that you notify them of this and you let them know about um, the registration deadline, which is April 19th. A whole community recovery is a collaborative effort between non-governmental organizations, especially like um, our disability protection advocacy agencies, our uh, disability service providers, as well as our independent living centers. And um, they partner with our VELs to ensure that any gaps in um, unmet needs that FEMA can't cover, that the whole community can help to, uh, again, reach your new normal. That's it. Thanks, Arthur. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so, you know, just in closing, uh, I want to thank everybody that participated. I, I hope that, that what you're getting the sense of here is that whether it's the local, the state, or the federal level, there is a very sincere and intense and proactive approach to ensuring that everybody in the community is going to be able to work their way through the recovery process. And the reality is that there are certain barriers and there are certain challenges that people with disabilities, older adults, anyone with an access or functional needs have. Uh, but those barriers shouldn't be insurmountable. That there are qualified subject matter experts who are here to assist. There are reasonable accommodations that can be made. There is acute case management support. There are resources that are available. Uh, so please use all those and please reach out with any questions. And please visit one of the disaster recovery centers. These centers are amazing. You can literally go table by table by table and just sit and have all your questions answered. You can have somebody assist you with the registration process. They can look up your individual case and answer your specific questions. These centers are physically accessible and they're programmatically accessible. So please feel free and comfortable to go to a disaster recovery center. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for the efforts that you're doing to recover. And please know that this recording will be made available. But just email OAFN at caloes.ca.gov. Uh, and we can provide transcripts in English and Spanish as well. So thank you, everybody. Appreciate it and uh, look forward to supporting you throughout this process.